Hello again, young scientists. I have a bunch of data from my science project that I want to graph. My last video showed how to graph using bar graphs, and we did this for uncontinuous data. This data will be continuous data. I, in my science project, am planning to, or actually I measured over the last seven days, the growth of tomato versus basil, plants versus a corn. Now I did tomato and basil, and in the same way, I want to show corn. So uh, I'm going to put this data, uh, data here, and I'll show you how I made the other two. We're going to be looking at, uh, I have five different um, plants that I measured the growth over the course of seven days. So let's show, let's show you how it worked out. And um, why don't you follow along as I'm doing this? Again, it's a video. I'm going to go fast, but you can pause it. All right, so here is the days. So I uh, click the, uh, type in day one and I can press enter. One little tip is if you press enter and you're entering a lot of data, the data will go down a column. If you press tab, the data continues down uh, across the row. Pretty cool stuff. So I hit enter and now I hit day two and I really only have to put two days because I can click and drag to select one and two. Uh, the computer knows that I'm going by increments of one, and then I fill it by putting my cursor here, hovering over it, and going all the way to day seven. So I'm going to do the same thing for trial. This time I say trial one, this time I hit tab, and then trial two. And then Click on trial one and two, and go over, and I'm going to five trials. The last one will be an average. Okay, so now I have my column and row headings. One thing I want to do here is say this is going to be corn since I have basil here. This one will be corn, and I'll call it growth of corn. Okay, uh, so notice that it's going uh, default across like that um, but if I want to be fancy and put it like this I should I should um, uh, click off of it now uh, click back on here make sure that it's merged so this becomes one cell and center it like this this is centered uh, left and right this is centered up and down and then you can change the angle of the text to make it rotate up okay so we'll do that that's pretty cool and I'm also going to do that here where I center the text and merge it and then I can say inches of growth there okay and that's how I can do that then I will enter my data and uh, put my uh, raw data in there after entering my data we can go ahead and calculate the averages again by making an equal sign and uh, equal sign says I'm going to use a formula. There's a number of formulas to choose from. I'm going to use the one that says average. And there it is. As soon as I start typing it, it knows that that's what I want to use. So double click on that and it says open parentheses. So I can select the data that I want. It, if I ever forget, it shows me here what parameters I need to put in there or what, uh, what I'm going to take the average of. Press close parentheses and press enter and it shows the average. I can use the fill again by hovering over and uh, dragging and letting go my mouse there and there are the averages. Now the averages aren't uh, very clean. Sometimes it, this is tw uh, 12 but all of these have um, a different amount of numbers past the decimal. So the best way to do to make it even is to um, highlight all of the numbers, right click, and then say I want to format the cells. When you format it, say it's a number, change the number of decimal places to one so they all have one and the data looks looks nice and clean. I noticed that I did that for the other things with the tomato and basil. All right, this graph is not complete until I make it look professional by adding uh, borders like that and uh, clicking and dragging and clicking borders like that. Click here uh, to make these column headings bold. So, and I can choose whatever color I want to 
um, change it up. Okay, nice. I like this nice blue over here, so I'm gonna do that and make it blue. So we have um, uh, various amounts of data here. Notice there's I skipped two lines here and I skipped only one line there. So uh, it's a good opportunity to show you that you can insert more columns like this or, or insert more rows like that. And, and uh, unfortunately, this thing showed up. So this is a good learning opportunity to show you that you can change the colors like this. Um, that's actually I chose white, but I want to choose no fill because that's what I'm going for. Okay. So there is your raw data. When we want to make a graph of this, these are our charts of my raw data. When we graph, the thing we will be interested in is the averages. So let's go to a new sheet and see if we can make an average of each plant per day. This is a new sheet that I made, uh, day, corn, tomato, and basil. So here uh, we can say these are the days I can control copy and paste that over here okay and then uh, we're gonna collect the averages so uh, control copy and paste it here this one was for tomato so paste that average there I paste it in the wrong place control Z uh, and control paste here uh, I got a stick here because the reference values since it was a calculation of um, averages of other data on the other sheet it's not um, converting so uh, just paste the values here and I got that change this to tomato averages and do the same thing for basil and corn boom and same thing again I want to change these numbers here into uh, uh, making sure that they're all rounded to the same amounts just for consistency so I can uh, let it show like this and then add the columns like this uh, make them bold again um, now this here says basil uh, it changed as I copied them over there okay so what I want to do is instead of these columns saying corn, tomato, basil, this is actually, I can make a uh, column heading over here saying that these here, this here is going to be the amount, this is the growth by uh, my units, which I always have, inches. Of my plants okay and that's my growth of my plants there what I can do is uh, send uh, uh, merge these cells and center it like so and this here is actually confusing because the days are here but not here so not across this way so what I want to do is I want to put the day on this side so we'll delete this and insert a cell insert a column here and I will actually call this the day days of growth and that will be my heading on this side and we'll change it to say it's gonna be vertical and make it bold here so that will actually be a little less confusing because my days of growth are this way my growth uh, uh, inches in the plants are across this way so let's make it uh, bold because these are headings and uh, let's make uh, grid lines okay and we will change this color to match the other color okay so that is my chart here of all of the averages Oh, maybe I should say average. Average growth inches in plants. Pretty good stuff. And you can always change the how how tall these are gonna be. Um, I want to make this larger, but I don't want the basil one just being really large and then the corn and tomato not. So what I'm gonna actually do is highlight C, D, and E. And what it can do is make them all the same size. As long as I make E this large. 
C and D will also be the same size. So I can just make E this large, C and D, C and D follow. So uh, pretty cool. So now these are evenly spaced. Okay, great. Now I'm ready to make the graph. So let's say insert here. We're gonna make it into a um, scatter plot. So it's gonna look like this, and there it is. Okay. Uh, it's, it really matters that you have to highlight the data that you want for it to graph. And we have corn here. Uh, here we know that corn is gonna grow at a, a higher rate, uh, and we can verify that with our raw data, our average data that's right here. Okay. Uh, again, you wanna. Uh, if you, if it does look funny, what you can do is switch to column and row data. So it sometimes may look like that initially, but if you switch it, it, it should look the way you want it. Okay. One thing that you need to do is go to layout and add your chart title and also your axis titles. So go ahead and do that right now. Boom! I put my titles here and notice that my I have my um, dependent variable here which is the average growth in inches my independent variable here which is days of growth on the x-axis uh, notice that my title includes the growth of the plant type by independent variable and my uh, dependent variable one really cool thing you can do in Excel is that you can also change the chart type after you've already decided what chart you want. So if you decide to do a line graph, click on those things and there you go. You can uh, see its growth as actually a line. So um, we can see from this data that the corn grew uh, a lot taller than the uh, other plants. Okay. Uh, again, before you uh, print, you want to make sure that you go to view and make sure that you do your page break preview so that you can move this line so that not half of the graph is on one page and the other half is on the other page. So move this down and uh, change this here so that they are all on one page. Okay. So back to here, we learned how to uh, get the so we're done with this video. We learned how to uh, get the averages over different things that you want. And then to just make a chart of the averages so you can make a graph of the averages. The, this graph has chart titles. It has a nice legend. And you are able to see the data pretty quickly and analyze your results. I hope that this video helped you. Good luck on making your own graph for your own data. I'm sure it will look beautiful. All right. Good luck.